Hi everyone, my name's Lou Sims and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, I'd love it if you hit subscribe, like, comment, all the things that uh, YouTube loves at the moment. And obviously follow me and then hit the notifications button and you'll know when I next release another video. Right, I'm here today to share my latest collection um, for Shady Designs. And this one, again, is all about frames and about flowers and lots of different things you can do. Now, the collection is been designed that it can be standalone and that you can do card making. It can be for background building. It can be for journaling, mixed media projects. A little bit of absolutely everything because that's the way I like to, you know, to craft. So I thought what I'd do this time is right, I'd do a YouTube video explaining a little bit more about the collection uh, and show you some of the ideas. And then towards the end, I will dig out some samples um, and, and show you those as well. Now, there's three stamp sets in the collection and there's a die set but I'm going to concentrate on the stamps first. Now the first stamp set I'm showing you is called Frame It With Flowers. Now this is an A5 um, stamp set and it you know it as it says it's called Frame It With Flowers and it obviously has a floral theme to it but it has background elements as well. So as I said it's an A5 stamp set. Mine has been well loved. Um, and you can use it in lots of different ways. So I just wanted to show. So this is to give you an idea of it um, coloured up. Um, so you can see the main floral element elements within it. Um, so you get in it a, a main focal piece, a main background piece, the frame builder and some extra little bits and pieces that can create additional frames or a different, put my teeth in, additional <laughs> embellishments. So looking at it for black and white, so these are now all the stamped images. I thought if I stamped them out, you could see them that way um, a little bit more. So they look suddenly different from black and white when you see them actually, um, you know, coloured up. And, and we all work in different ways. But so you get, like I said, the main floral. You've got this part here that creates frames, a background piece here that's got the flowers in. But the flowers can easily be cut away and, and layered on top. Two smaller flowers, which are similar, um, not identical, but similar. And the reason you've got the two there is you can put two at the same time on your stamp block and create a quick background. These will make borders, but they'll also make frames as well. These two pieces here. But the smaller piece will sit inside this piece for a frame. You've got the sentiment here that just says music, music, music. Um, to build up a background and then stamp in different gaps. Um, a heart element here, which has got like a, a musical flourish and a sentiment which says today is full of possibilities. OK, so what can you actually do with this set? So I'm going to turn this card over. So the main stamped image is this portion, this one here underneath my hand here. So you can use it as is. Or it's been designed that you can actually fit them in together to create a cluster. So you can now make a huge bouquet just by stamping it twice. Alternatively, you could put them top and tail them and they can create, um, you know, a background as quick as that. So you can create a really quick full background on a card. Both would fit an A5 or um, like a six by six card just with two stamping and that and that's what I wanted from Shady Designs. Minimal stamping but created maximum wow factor. So we've got that main focal point there. We've now going to go on to the one that was the little corner. I'm going to flip this over and go to start this side. So this is the main corner here but you can now stamp it four times and it creates a frame which means then you you're free to do whatever you like in the center there. If you then take it and just stamp it twice, it creates a completely different sort of frame, which if you were doing an art journal page, means both of these quickly fill up an art journal page um, very, very quickly with minimal amount of stamping. And I've got samples to show with all of those. OK, so from here, I've stamped it 
the four times, but I've left a gap now to put one of the smaller stamped elements that go in there. So one of these, so this little small one here is now joining the frame so it can suddenly become bigger. If I had used the longer one here, it would have been even bigger frame. So it gives you control that you can go from a frame, but just stamping it like that or suddenly adding in the edge pieces and it gets bigger and then I've just stamped some of the flowers around so you can really quickly create a scene um, for your card fronts like I said for your journal pages you know however you want to be with a minimal amount of stamping now all the lines here are not straight and that's done deliberately um, I think we put great pressure on ourselves to make everything you know just perfect just so and by not having a straight line it doesn't matter if it slightly tips to one side or the other and that's what I wanted I wanted to have that freedom that you it really didn't matter about having a perfect straight line so that's that corner part there we've also then what I've done was I've taken the main floral element and I've stamped that corner twice and then added that small piece again and suddenly you can create a completely di different looking frame floral frame uh, you could put a sentiment inside there you know if i'd have stamped it further over here it would have looked completely different again but you can now frame it or as shown before you can use it by itself alternatively i've taken the same stamp but now i've put it upside down since the two small flowers are on the top I put them on the bottom and I've used that flourish embellishment to create a separate frame. So it now looks completely different again. You know, instead of having all the greenery frame around it, you can then create a more structural sort of frame as well. So then going from there, these now are the background. So this background stamp here is, is this one here. Um, but... I wanted it to be done that you could, this has been stamped three times, but suddenly you could create a really quick detailed background just by that one stamp. I mean, I've stamped in black, which means it will stand out on the boards. But if you stamped it in a, um, a lighter colour and made it recede into the background, you could then put the focal images on top. I've taken from here that... Um, this one here that could be going horizontal or vertical, it doesn't matter. And I've made a frame with it. And the same with the smaller one. Now, if I cut this out, this smaller frame will fit inside the larger frame. So you can do your layering like that. You can take them and make borders. So this, you know, it could go down or it could go across. You've got the dots on the end that you could end the flowers on. So they become dangles. And it doesn't matter which size you use. It you know, the flowers can look either way. And like I said, you can then make it go, you know, horizontal. And that's just a very, very small snapshot of some of the things you can do with the Frame It with Flowers stamp set. Right, so let's just move that over the way and we'll go to the second one. Now, this one here is called Floral Frames. I'm not known for thinking of elaborate names for my stamps. I... It is what it is, really. And I wanted to do it so it wasn't just, a, a, you know, the stamped outlines there. I wanted to give you an idea of what they look like coloured in um, from, you know, from the black and white there. Suddenly it changes it when you see a little bit of colour. So you've now got the main image here. You've got a little piece here that can just be stamped alone and put a sentiment in there. We've got... This one here, which has got the um, the treble clef with a flower behind. You've got an extra border, which has now got the hearts down. You've got some music, notes. So these these would work with the first set I showed you. And that's important. If you're, you know, if you're getting everything, everything works together. You've got some hearts to add to it. You've got a sentiment which says, like a flower, you brighten my day. And then another one here, which says, love is a friendship set to music. And that can be a little banner. So that's them all now stamped out in, you know, black and white on the board. And you can see. But one of the things that's important is the lines here and here don't match up. 
And there is a reason for that. And the reason for it is it creates a mitered corner. So when you want to create your frames, you can create solid pieces. And I can show you that as we go along. So if we, let's, I'm going to flip that one over because I don't want to show you just yet. So where we've got that piece there, as you can see, now when they stamp together, that's where they are. You've got like a faux mitered corner. And then suddenly your frame appears. Again, none of the lines are straight, so it doesn't matter if it goes to slightly to the left or the right. It really doesn't matter. But they give the illusion that you've got a complete frame, even if your stamping's not 100%. I wanted it so as well that you could do it from the top of a piece of card. So if I do it that way... So now suddenly you could have it. So it was going on a piece of card. I'm just going to grab another piece so that you can see. And it could go like that. And that now becomes a seven by five card. Or if you wanted to chop it down even smaller, you could make it a DL and only have bits of it showing. So from one large stamp, it can suddenly do, you know, a little bit more. Alternatively, you could put it in the corner and, you know, build upwards with the card which means as well that the corner, I'm just going to quickly rotate this round, could be going down the card as well as to the side, or alternatively, she says, could be going upwards. So now you, you could be starting here and working your way out as well. I also wanted it, so like where we've got the corner piece here, I've added that heart border. So now I can create, this is um, a seven, no, five by five, Start again, an A5 card. I'll get my things done there. <coughs> Excuse me. So we've got that now stamped here. I've literally just joined it with the heart border and I've created a card going that way. I've laid mine up and then I can put my sentiment here. Alternatively, I could have um, stamped again this way. But, you, you know, you can create quick cards so this is just one stamp and this has been stamped, I think, two, no more than three times. And you've got what looks like a really detailed panel. So that's at the corner stamp there. Now, this smaller stamp here can be, you know, used by itself. I've just put the heart border underneath. So it could be um, if you were doing an A6 card, it could be an A6 card and you could have, end up. You know, you could put some of the smaller elements on if you wanted to. So if I take this part here, if you stamp it four times, it also will create a frame. And you've got these outside portions here. Um, you could just then put a simple mat and layer if you wanted to, or cut it away if you wanted to create an aperture. But this will also create, you know, a frame as well. The musical notes, it can be done for backgrounds or we can suddenly, I've just stamped the heart um, strip there, the sentiment, and I've just then the smaller little music notes around. And that can be then just a card front on an inky background. So even though some of the elements are smaller, they themselves can be used independently or built up to create our backgrounds. So that's just, I mean, it really is just a small snapshot of um, some of the ideas with the floral frames. And now we're going to move it on to this set, which is called Frame It Some More. As you can see by the theme, <laughs> my names all go around frames or flowers or floral. Again, it's a corner piece, but it is different from the other corner. Let me just go and grab the other sheet and I can show you what I mean. So we've got this piece here, but this one we've got a, a flower coming out but both these two would line up together to create another sort of frame if that's what you wanted to do so all the stamps work together you've got a, a separate floral you've then got a square here um, which is dots you've got some smaller embellishments if I turn them around you can probably see so you've got some rings you've got the treble clef this will also create frames um, and borders or it will extend lines the heart there will do exactly the same or it'll make dangles and you've got a sentiment saying make today the day and again I've got them all stamped out as black and white so you can see all the different stamps you're going to get 
but then seeing them in colour gives you also a different, you know, an idea of what they would look like when they're, you know, they're coloured up as well. So as before, these parts do not line up, and that's so we can give that that faux um, mitered look when we join everything together. So let's just flick you over. So I'm just going to flick this one over. So again, this one, you can see this is where it ends here and here. But when you join the second part, it gives that um, illusion, that mitered look. They, they, they touch each other and, and suddenly you have a whole frame. So by just stamping the one stamp twice, you, you create a complete frame. Now, there will be a little bit of overlap in places like this, but... Because of the nature of the way they're drawn, it just looks like it's these sort of elements coming back out again. Like before, I wanted it so you could use it on the side as a triangle. You could use it so it goes at the top and comes down. It could be used going from right to left. It could be used on an envelope. You know, so you don't have to make a frame just like this. You can use it as a standalone piece. I've then stamped it so it goes in the corner and this would create a card. This is um, a seven by five size card, but I could, you know, reverse it. So it was in this corner and going up. So the frames can be, you know, whatever you want. Now, I know the lines are missing there, but that you could stamp in one of the heart stamps that you've got there, the treble clef, the circles, and you can build it up. Alternatively, you could just take a micron pen, you know, and fill it in yourself the choice is, is yours to create so let's just move this out of the way so I've, what I've done now is I've taken the single flower and I've taken this border stamp that we've got here it's got a little flourish so I've just stamped that and then I put the flourish three times around so you could then got another sort of frame and I put the flourish facing the outside on this one, I've stamped it at the top and I've rotated the flower in a different direction. But this time when I've stamped, I've put it so the flourish goes in the inside and suddenly they look completely different by just how you rotate the stamp around and where you position these pieces. For the bottom one, what I've done is I've stamped the flower going one direction this way and then it's come in on itself to stamp this way. And then I've gone around the outside here. Now, the gap here is where I would probably put my sentiment. So, I mean, you could just partially ink, it, you know, it, if, if that's what you wanted to do as well. I could have moved the borders in. But it was just to show that, you know, these elements will create frames as well as backgrounds or lines for your journaling, whatever you want them to be. And that's just from the single flower. I've then stamped the single flower and again rotated it a different direction from these two frames and I've created a long frame so this now is on a seven by five card so you can make it as small as you want or as big as you want and all we've got is just that one floral element so let's go from here let's move this out of the way so this now is the dots so that I wanted the dots there to be a frame as you can see or to make a background. So I've got it here that I could carry on stamping this up and very quickly I've got a background. If I stamped it in multiple colours, you know, it takes on, you know, a life of its own. It's easy to place an over stamp on dots so you can create that. So as you can see here by um, this sort of argyle sort of pattern, I've over stamped on some of the dots and, and you can create that and I could carry on building this um, to make it as big or as small as you want. Alternatively, I've stamped it here and then I've just stamped the flower on top. So that single flower suddenly sits inside here as well. And that would make or sit on top of, um, I think this is something like a, I'm just going off the top of my head, a three and a half square. Um, but, you know, equally it could go on a four, five, six, you know, and add in some of the other embellishments and that is like I said from the frame it's some more stamps and this is just a very very small snapshot of some of the ideas that you can do with it and I haven't shown you boards um, that combine absolutely uh, everything together so I'm just putting my boards back properly and you know so when you combine them the 
possibilities become endless because you can create multiple frames using different of the stamps um, you know and build them up in lots and lots of different ways so let's put these right back to the beginning as you can see i'm just keeping them there i'm being really good and trying to keep them all in order so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to quickly pause the video and i'm going to go and grab um some samples and then that will give you you know lots of different ways to see how the stamps can work by themselves or when they're all combined together um you know, lots of different colourways. Well, let me just grab the samples. That would probably be easier. Right, I went away and grabbed some samples and I realised oh, there was a huge pile here. There was another huge pile, two huge piles behind me and we haven't even touched on the dies yet. But I'm just going to quickly whiz through some of the samples. So this is the dot frame that we were talking about um, on the um, Frame It Some More stamp set. So... Sheila's used it and, and created that background and then added in some of the other background details, little stamp from it, and then just stamped, you know, from one colour flower on there. I'm going to see if I can find another one. So, again, the same stamp, but has been stamped on the inside and then the frames put around the outside. So it's using um, that frame to place these frames if if that's what you you know actually want to and and that's from Sheila I'm just working out where can I put things as I go right let's see if I can find some quickly some more again Claire it is Claire has done it and so instead of being square she's done it diagonally and stamped the flower inside to make a really I don't like the phrase clean and simple I'm going to call it clean and sophisticated design you know, and, and that could be for any, you know, any occasion, whatever sentiment you put it on, th that design would work for that. So that one's there. I'm just going to see if I can find any more. If not, I'll just keep playing. As you, and like I said, this is just a small snapshot of different things. Right. Let's just keep plowing through. And again, now this is doing the two borders. And I believe this is Sheila. Yep. Yeah. And Sheila's doodle doodled inside the borders. But instead of doing it as a square, she's made it more like a diamond. So suddenly the frame looks completely different again. Taking the um, element, um, which is, let me grab this from the floral frames, which is that stamp there, which has got the treble clef and a little bit of detail on it. Actually created a frame and a background just using that. And that makes it beautiful and stands out. The one that I was saying, you know, like this one here with which has got the like the little banner and I created a frame again. Sheila's created it and created a background and then stamped the flower and cut it out and laid it out. If I put the card the right way around would probably be a good idea. Um, you know, so, so it's creating the frame that way. And by colouring the centre in to match, it looks like that was what everybody, you know, it should be. But then the big image is. But this is on a tag. So just stamping partial little bits of it, it stands out beautifully on a tag. Now, Brian has taken the larger elements. I'm going to keep these together so I don't lose them. And suddenly you've got a set of ATCs. So it, it's taking, I will, will need to go through some of the die cuts, which I do. So it's taking some of the smaller elements. I mean, the larger elements make them smaller, but they work beautifully as on a set of ATCs as they do on a card. I'm going to put the elastic band back on that because I don't want to lose them. Or alternatively, using it on an MDF plaque. Brian's done it that way and taken the element and layered them up there and added some of the die cut elements. And it works beautifully as a home decor piece. Brian's also really cool at making jewellery. Look, look, and the earrings. So I don't want to take these out just yet. I'm scared I'm going to lose them. But he's taken one of the notes and stamped it inside there. And that's earrings. And then he's taken the heart, stamped it twice with some more notes. And made it into a beautiful, beautiful pendant. As I said, I'm keeping them in the bag so I don't lose them. And then, it, this is from Brian as well. So that's stamping the um, element from Frame It With Flowers, which is this one here. I remember when I was saying when I showed you the black and white boards by stamping it in um, a different colour, i.e. the green, 
it becomes the background and then stamping these parts on top suddenly it does make a background and this has just been stamped twice so that stamped twice the flower on top a sentiment and that that's your card love this idea i think this is claire and this actually i believe is the waste that's left from the die cuts which we will talk about in a moment and then stamping inside you know inking it and then stamping inside so you create a frame i think this is beautiful idea it's like a keyhole look isn't it and then Alison's done this one where she's taken that background which had you know the flowers on and then layered the two main images on there to create a really striking I mean I'd make that as a, a beautiful art journal piece I mean it, you could easily do it I mean it must be an eight by eight card I would have thought but as a journal page that is absolutely you know it pops and this one is by Alison as well. But then taking it and instead of and actually cutting away the lines that make the frame and then suddenly it becomes a corner piece. And again, the same stamp looks completely different. This one here is Jan's and Jan stamped that background and then added lots of the smaller focal pieces onto a stenciled background. And, and that's, you know, that's a card in its own right or the starting point for a journal piece. Love this idea by Jan, by taking the dots and building all the smaller elements around. And then we've got the flower cut out. So you could just use it to cover the flower as, as, you know, a really beautiful background. Or you've got the flower there as your focal. Now, I love this idea by Sue. So we'll go into the dies in a moment. So Sue's created this, oh, I want to call it like a folio that you would get in a, a, a memory book. But then I think it'd be you know, such a great idea for a gift card. So this is the flower stamped and coloured. We've got that background, that stamp that's got the flowers and the notes on. So this opens up, as you can see like that. And we've got those pieces there, the heart there and there as the border piece. Another part of the flower, but actually using it um, so it's horizontal. Open this again. And then this is like your centre panel. And again, it changes it from, in my eyes, it was like frames, um, squares and diamonds. So it's changed it again and added in some of the die cut elements. I absolutely think that's such a genius idea. And obviously created a band for it holding it all together and that's got the dies that we're having but I'll like I said I'll explain the dies in a moment and then we've got this one and again stamping on a circle or stamping it and die cutting a circle out um, and then it's been framed with some of the um, the dies that we've got to go with the collection and it looks completely different again just by being on a circle not in a square and I think that's um, Sue's yeah Sue Riley's now, I wanted to get these two because this was done. Both of these were done by Anne-Marie. So Anne-Marie's done this as like no lines colouring. And, you know, it's beautiful and, it you know, it's soft. It's got a really, really. Oh, you know, a really soft, mellow feel about it. And then using the same designs, but suddenly colouring them up. They look completely different and i love the way that um, you know she's created two contrasting samples let's put that there but then this one is Anne marie as well and as i was saying putting it onto the side that corner it doesn't have to make a frame it can just be a corner piece and then we've got the um that little border bit there and suddenly it looks different again sue as in sue morgan has taken the um, corner piece from i'm dreadful for saying names i apologize frame with flowers so this corner piece here which i'll show you on the boards stamping it twice and then putting the sentiment in there and it creates a completely and then you know having it coming in from the edges suddenly it looks different again so change this one with no lines coloring again or coloring in the pink and then coloring the flower and 
it, it becomes a lovely subtle sort of effect project. That's Sue, yeah. And then Sue, this is the one I was looking for to show with the dots, but never mind. I've got there in the end. So Sue's used the dot and created a really bold, bright, dotty background with, you know, watercolour. But then the flowers have just been kept in white and a little subtle pink. And they've got some of the die cuts as well. So you've got all of that, so it changes it. Right, so Sam's, I'm just going to take this piece out here. I've got bits everywhere. So this piece here is in a home decor piece. If I can flick it over there, frame. And this is by Sam Lang. And this is, you know, creating and extending it. So now it suddenly becomes a longer piece. But then Sam took it one step further and put the same sort of design. I'm just unravelling it in behind here, if you can hear rustling. And put it onto rice paper and then this is on um, a t-shirt and actually created you know a t-shirt panel to go there so you know the, the elements can be used in so many different ways so I'm just going to fold that t-shirt up so I don't get it dirty I'm just trying to find somewhere safe that's not covered in ink everywhere so we've got you know home decor pieces or more mixed media pieces with them layered up um, you know, and created in lots of different ways. And this one here, I mean, it's a long card. But just stamped three times and loosely watercoloured, it stands out equally. And then this one is using like your layering dies that you've got to cut the frames and panels out and stamping it in a beautiful colour. And you've got the dot background there framing the actual sentiment that goes in the middle. So they all look, you know, completely different. Um, and I love that everybody's taken a different take on it. Right, I'm just going to put them to one side there. Right, I'm going to grab my ones in because obviously I have done some bits and pieces as well. Right. Oh. So let's start. Whoa. There we go. I'm sorry, I've got a cup of coffee here and I'm trying to make sure you don't, I don't knock it over. So this now is taking some of the smaller elements, as you can see, and I've got the dies in the background, and I'll explain a bit more about the dies. I'm trying to keep the video short, but I'm not sure that's going to happen, but I'll try. Or go a little bit more mixed media on this tag. So I've layered mine up. Um, and, you know, suddenly they're no longer frames. I've cut the frame away and then just layered all the elements up to create like a mixed media tag put you there I was saying about stamping in the corner so I've stamped in the corner and I've just put it on that on the back there and it's on an acetate so these are the die cuts um you know it's coming out so it's now on an acetate frame and it looks completely different again as I said I will go through the dies just taking part of it and stamping in either corner. And I've just watercolored those out, um, embossed in white first, and then I've just watercolored those out. This was just literally splodging some ink down, stamping um, the background with um, the stamp that came from Frame It With Flowers. I've then stamped the stamp once this way and once this way, that was from Frame It With Flowers. And then just stamped again, you know, and, and, and coloured it by actually stamping some of the background backgrounds in there to create a completely different look. I'm trying to embrace orange. So there's a lot of orange and yellow at the moment. I'm trying. Alternatively, I've made a frame and I've coloured these with alcohol markers this time. But if you've got the starflower frames, they work also because you have these parts in the starflower frames that actually now can change all the different frames but I have to say you watch this space for that one that's not quite as a two minute thing to explain um, but it's really quite simple to do um, but they now work and create a completely different look so each of those different floral ones from the oval from the star flower now suddenly all can be combined together to create um, a bigger bouquet you know I like black and white pages. I've got a couple on the go. So what I did here, this is in um, my journal. 
and I've stamped the background from Frame It With Flowers. These ones, I believe, sorry, I'm just moving samples because I'm worried I'm going to knock my coffee over. So this flower here is from the Frame It Some, yeah, Frame It Some More. I had to think which one it was then. Yeah, Frame It Some More. Louise, get some. So I've stamped it here once, stamped it there, and then I've joined it with one of the joining strips there. Um, and I've just coloured it white with a little bit of gold. And then I've cut the centre out from the actual page. So when I flip it over, I've then stamped the single flowers, the background again, which I've washed out. So the flowers now stand out within that background stamp and the music notes recede in just a little bit more. I mean, it, it just needs a finishing sentiment, which could be, you know, here so you could see through the aperture or even here. So, you know, if you like creating interactive journal pages, you know, you could easily do that, whether it's um, in a smaller book or a larger book. So put you safely somewhere. Remembering all this. And now this is uh, this is an A4 journal, which I'm struggling to get in. It's uh, if I close it, you'll see it's another A4 journal. Probably just a smidge bigger. And that was taking that corner from the frame it with flowers so that corner there and i was saying by stamping it four times how suddenly you can create and fill space incredibly quickly so this now is two pages in an a4 journal and they stand out i've got to finish it with some sentiments i have to live with my pages for a while so you know suddenly it changes this video is already out showing, this is in an A4 journal as well, um, it, showing a different way of using it and layering it up and doing all the different backgrounds, all the different elements in the backgrounds and being very, very tonal. Um, you know, so the whole collection has been designed to suit how you want to create, um, you know, from home decor, from other pieces, from ATCs, from jewellery, you know, it just goes on, you know, and on and on. You know, it, it's phenomenal, all the different pieces that you, you know, you can actually do. Right, I'm going to put these to one side and then quickly grab the dies. Right, the Frame It collection also comes with a DL die set. And I'm not going to show you the die cut board because I think sometimes it's nice to see some of the samples i mean i've got oodles of samples but to give you an idea so you've got three sentiments on there and it's just for you be fierce always and sending hugs and they're like in a typewriter sort of font and they cut in so you can layer up you get this main panel here which i'm going to lift up which has got embossed details and the shape of this is matches the flowers that are in the stamps you get a one here that die cuts out, so you'll get an outer edge of a leaf and the centre bit comes away. That is so you've got choices. You can put that bit back inside or you could use the centre as leaves. And then you get this part here, which is for um, building, you know, backgrounds. So you've got textural, so the leaves can go in there, the flowers can go on there. And then we've got like a, a, a leaf shape or a flower shape. So... So how does that work on cards? So this is the one I was saying to you about Sue. So Sue's taken it and she's cut it and she's then just taken a white gel pen and added little bits and pieces from there. Now this die here, the outside edge cuts away a shape and I'll show you on the next sample. And then you're left with the inner pieces with an emboss line. So Sue's actually used those inner pieces to be the leaves rather than the outside edge so it gives you a little bit more um, scope about how you want to do them now this back panel i really wanted to be um, an introduction to creating textural backgrounds using dies i know we've got background dies but i wanted these to be that if you were new to art journaling or mixed media projects you've got something there that's not too scary to work with as a stepping stone so i've taken it and i've cut them from white and I just highlighted them with a little bit of pink in the background. Now that die, as I said, you can get the outside edge comes away, as you can see here, and this part comes away. And I've just layered mine in one inside the other to create a different set 
of leaves. But by die cutting this twice on this tag, I've got a textural background straight away. And then it just needs one or two elements. And that's what I really wanted from it um, to be that starting point of a textural. So when I showed this card before here, I've done exactly the same, but I created um, a strip. Let me just grab a strip. Oh. So I just, this was a strip I created. Um, I think I used pale paint. I can't remember off the top of my head. And then taking that, um, what I've done is I die cut them. I've added probably a little bit more ink two or three times and I put it on top of a piece of acetate. And now that creates by being, um, green they don't look like flowers and it changed again and then this is just one of the corner pieces added on top and then I've just put a few more of this die coming out just to extend that bouquet more so when the card stands up you, you've got that sort of a look it's really hard with an acetate card um, about it but then I've still got room if I wanted to stamp a frame inside I could do so or and, and change the way it looks again um, and just put a sentiment on there which is probably either going to put the sentiment probably up there but it makes a really nice um, easy background that's easy to work with it's not too mixed media but I'm just going to grab put this one um, to one side so I'm just going to grab this, these two here. So as I was saying, I wanted them to be a background that could be, you know, form part of a card. And as you can see what Jan's done here, she's just done that and inked it and put it on her stencil background. But then she's cut it again in black and created that drop shadow layer. So, you know, if you didn't have the stencil background, it makes just a lovely, subtle piece by itself. Or you, you can create something a little bit more inky. For this one, she hasn't done any of the decoration as such. She's stamped inside it, so it's got a completely different look. But I've got that textural background um, there, and you've got the shape of the flowers coming through. Brian has done it, so you've got that. So the twig shape create a frame by joining them up and stamping the flowers and then adding the die cut so where I said so you can see that part comes away and this part falls away in the middle so now you've got two different types of leaves in just in one die so it looks different again so Sam's done this one as you can see by cutting in white I've got that textural background I've got the flower look and then just building up the other die cuts and adding wax to create you know, a very cool contemporary looking card and then love this idea by Sam so she's cut that the leaf shape and just put it on an inky background and it looks completely different again but it's got a very modern you know contemporary feel to it and Sue has done it here but by cutting it now suddenly in coloured cardstock they look completely different and have a really bold impact look to them, adding to your actual decoration and then splitting the sentiment in two rather than keeping it, you know, just in one. And then talking about sentiments, Sue Morgan, that was Sue Riley, Sue Morgan here. This is the small flower that she's cut loads of times. But then on the sentiment, she's put lots of different colours behind it and it changes it from being black and white to suddenly something completely different again so you've got just for you there and then you've got the sending hugs then just for you as you can see different color again in gray it looks completely different again sue's taken the die cuts and cut them in, in complementary card but cut them down a little bit so they actually go around and frame the stamping so i got that bit too close so now it looks this background looks different again. And then we've got Sam's cut the beer fierce always in craft and layered it up. And it looks, you know, how you cut the sentiments out look completely different. You could paper piece in all those little words. You could use all the words completely, you know, differently if that's what you wanted to do. And then adding in other elements to build up your design. So the, the dyes were there. Smoothies, like I said, I've got loads I can share with you. 
but I'm conscious how long I've already probably waffled already. So the dies are there to, you know, to take, can be used in card making, but also can be taken um, if you want to, to start doing a few more inky techniques as well. So that's the collection. So the collection is, so you're going to have to see now my horrible stamps, but they're not horrible, but I meant is they're lovely inky. So you've got three A5s. So we've got frame it with flowers is one of them. Floral frames is another. And frame it some more. You can see original names for me. I, you know, it's about all I can come up with. And then you've also got the die set to go with it. There's three stencils on, but they have been on before. So that is the new collection from, from me, Shady Designs. So watch this space. You'll see everybody sharing samples over um, Saturday and Sunday. Oh, I should say when the show is really, shouldn't I? The launch is on Creating Craft on Sunday at three o'clock and then again at seven. And I believe they may be on the Dolly Dimples website from Monday. I'm not sure, but no doubt Charmaine will confirm uh, when that actual you know date they're on the Dolly Dimples website because I'm not sure. You know, I don't want to say it t say you tell you something and it's completely wrong. So do watch this space. Um, thanks ever so much for your time and company, and I hope that gives you a little bit of an insight into the, the next thing coming from uh, you know Shady Designs. Um, and how much, you know, possibility and scope there is. I'm just looking about how dirty my stamps are. I think I might have to give them a bit of a birthday. Anyhow, thanks ever so much, as I said before, for your time and for your company. Um, watch this space for lots of samples. Um, I have videos queued up for the end of next week. Um, so you can see some different ideas combining absolutely everything. Okay, I'm going to stop waffling now. Thanks ever so much, everybody, and for your continued support. It, it, it's absolutely blown my mind, um, and I'm really humbled by it, by it all. Take care, and I'll see you all soon.